folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome back. This is update number seven for our project layout. All right, if you're keeping up, you'll know that in our last video, we installed roadbed, we laid track, and we talked about our hidden connector bridges. Before we do anything, let's get sidetracked. You know, there's a lot going on out there in the modeling community, especially on the World Wide Web. Some of the best resources to keep us up close and in touch with our hobby are in the form of podcasts, message forums, Facebook pages, and of course YouTube channels. Recently, I took part in a great podcast presented by MRH Magazine. It's the MRH Podcast hosted by Paul Gillette. Yeah, we talked about anything and everything relating to our hobby of model railroading and working in the real railroad industry. Just like the online magazine of the same name, the podcast is free to listen to right online or download and listen anytime. It's right on the MRH website or you can find them on iTunes. If you've been watching our videos, you know we love to get out to train shows. Whether it's there as a vendor or just browsing around, we'd love to see what's going on and what people are doing. Well, with that said, what's in the box, dude? It's a custom-built, budget-minded, modular layout control box. It was built by a fellow named Dave Klein of the Baltimore area band track and T-Track Club. Oh yeah, I always stop by to see my buddy Jeff Peck and the guys, and I just couldn't resist sharing this control box built into an ordinary plastic toolbox. Wow. This thing is cool. It's got everything a modular layout needs. It can control both DCC and DC layouts, and it's even got a built-in programming track right in the box. With the modular layout in mind, Dave built this thing to be easy to set up and operate. It only has two connections on the rear. One delivers inbound power to the box, and the other connection delivers power to the track. Inside the box, toggle switches can be switched back and forth depending on the layout mode, DC or DCC. That's Dave Clyde there, and as you can see, it looks like it makes it real easy for the guys to be up and running in no time. Thanks, Dave. We really enjoyed the visit. I really think we should do more of the sidetrack thing where we share what's going on in the hobby. Alright, well, you don't have to pull my arm. Let's do it. I want to share this real neat layout with you. This is the layout Facebook page of a friend of mine named Larry Burke. Larry's a longtime modeler, and he's currently modeling an O-scale narrow gauge. As you can see, Larry is a fantastic modeler, and he updates his Facebook page regularly, featuring his layout progress. Hey, while we're at it, Larry also has a YouTube channel dedicated to the layout, where he features various video clips of the layout and his progress. Links to Larry's Facebook page and YouTube channel can be found in the video description section right here on YouTube. Now, of course, if you're watching this from a message board, you can simply click the YouTube button in the video to be taken directly to the YouTube channel, where you'll see the video description. While I'm on the topic of Facebook pages, some of you that watch our videos aren't aware that we have a Trackside Scenery Facebook page where we share the latest happenings and we update often. As you can see here, we also have a page dedicated to the display layout project itself. We update this regularly as well. Alright, back to work. Let's proceed, shall we? Alright, I've probably said this a thousand times. With me, not everything let's say, not anything is written in stone, especially when it comes to the layout. Why? Because model railroading is art, man. Come on, go with the flow is my motto. As you can see, I made some changes as I was laying the track. Yep, a couple of these changes allow the necessary space to accommodate some newly thought up scenery elements that I think will really enhance the overall theme of the layout. As imaginative as I am, or think I am, I always leave myself the proverbial room for changes, to an extent. Really, it more or less comes down to looking at what I've done so far and seeing what I could do to make it better. If I'm able to make those changes and it works out, great. All right, we're working on the town side of the layout. We have all the track laid, right? No. Well, beforehand, I had a plan of where I would add in some of the drop feeders as I laid the track, and I installed those feeders. You saw some of that in the last video, update number six. Okay, I'll say here and now that this is not a tutorial on wiring. There's a lot of ways you can do it. This illustration simply shows how I wired the layout. All right, I've seen it in the message boards many times, but I'll tell you, I have absolutely no clue as to why some people think wiring for a DCC application is so difficult. I can assure you from experience, myself having been a DCC user for many, many years, and you can argue amongst yourselves, wiring for DCC is way easier than wiring for DC and block control. Trust me. Now, this is especially the case on a small layout such as this, but even for a much larger layout, there are only a few additional components required to deliver the power for longer runs. You can do what you want at your layout, but I can assure you there are only two wires from the control box to the main bus wires on this layout. Okay, we're outside the print shop here. It's so nice to get all the track laid and see what it looks like. With all the track laid and fine-tuned on the town side of the layout, I took this thing outside and used my patented technique of flat black overspray. Why, you ask? 
people ask why I do this all the time. Well, if you've watched our video on track weathering right here on the YouTube channel, you'll know that I always use flat black as a primer or base coat before weathering. Yes, yes, we're a long way off from actually weathering a track, but now is as good a time as any. Alrighty, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of the video. Switch machines and turnout control. As you know, we're using Circuitron slow motion switch machines. In this view, you can see how I grouped all of the switch machine leads into a loom. The leads are long enough that I can move the whole thing if necessary. Of course, I labeled and identified all the connections. Uh, it's always nice to have some assistance from my favorite helper. I, I mean boss. Actually, she's the brains of the outfit, but don't tell anyone. I don't want to stain on my good reputation, you know. Remember I mentioned the not written in stone thing? Well, it came into play here. There just wasn't enough room on the left side or the middle of the layout to have a control panel this large, so we moved the wire loom to the right side. As you can see, we're going to use a budget picture frame for our control panel assembly. As we move towards the left-hand side, this is the location of the handheld throttle connection panel. Now, we did something a little different on this layout as opposed to the ON30 layout. On the previous layout, the DCC control box was mounted to the wheeled cart. The cart stayed with the module. On this layout, the module is removable from the cart for storage and transport. So as of right now, the DCC panel is mounted in the module. It's removable for easy access though. This wire loom contains the main bus wires and the DCC communications cable. We kept these separate from the switch machine leads. On the bottom of the switch machines, we're using an adapter so we don't have to solder any wires. This is a simple solution that clips onto the bottom and the wires are attached by a screw type connector. Here you can see we created a temporary mock-up panel using a cheap frame and a printed graphic. Now this gives us the chance to experiment with the toggle placement and also see if it looks good. You know I'm picky when it comes to this stuff. Yep, picky. And for a few years now, I have exclusively used touch toggle controls and equipment by Barrett Hill. These devices are easy to install, easy to use, and they make a great looking control panel. They also provide a great layout operating experience. Hey, I'm Joey Ricard and I approve this message. Again, I want to point out this segment is not an all-inclusive tutorial, but if you're interested in learning more and seeing Touch Toggles in action, an in-depth video we have right here on our YouTube channel is called A Look at Touch Toggles. Be sure to check it out. Alright, back to the panel itself. That budget picture frame that'll be our panel is going to be flush mounted right into the layout fascia. Yeah, we're going to have to cut that nice, pretty, not free pine. Ah, there you go. And through the magic of video. And of course, we're going to have to clean that opening up and add some accents. But as you can see, it'll be a nice fit. No, Muggsy, it's not time to run trains yet. I'll let you know. Okay, this is what I meant by adding accent. And I didn't mean like a French accent. I cut this frame out on the laser. It'll definitely give it a nice finished look and also help keep the panel in place. Alright, before I even added the turnouts to the layout, I went through my plan and I identified all the turnouts and in industry locations. This would make it easy when I was putting the panel together. As you can see, I labeled the turnouts with simple abbreviations that would relate to the turnouts themselves. For instance, the crossovers X1 and X2. Once I had the so-called plan together, I drew up the graphics on a computer and printed out the panel on a nice satin paper. Now, you don't have to have a fancy printer. You can just as easily do this on plain paper with your home computer. With that out of the way, I was now able to cut the graphic out and insert it into the picture frame. The rest was simply a matter of adding the touch toggles to the back of the new graphic print. Oh, what do we have here? Check that out. Isn't that nice? Oh, I, I mean, the panel's nice too. Look at that. All right, all right. Let's get back on track and see how this thing operates. Look at that. Touch toggles. Touch toggles by Barrett Hill. I want to thank our friend Kevin Hunter of Barrett Hill for not only providing these great products to us, but for also taking the time and participating in our many projects over the years. Thanks, Kevin. And for more information on Touch Toggles, you can visit www.touchtoggle.com or you can find more information and his link in this video's description. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. One last thing. Doreen came up with a name for the town. What's the name of the town, Doreen? Webster Springs. Ah, Webster Springs. I like that. It has a nice ring to it. Now, in the next video, we're going to have more on Touch Toggles as we work our way onto the mountain side of the layout. So be sure to stay with us. Oh yeah, there's a lot to be done, but as you can see, we're having a lot of fun doing it. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and follow the progress. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSightScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.